Welcome back to my channel, you all. If you have not joined the family yet for Drink A Nation family, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button and the ring bell so you never miss an upload. Join the family. Come on and join the family and get on this journey with us so we can love on you. And also so you could just, you know, become a part of the family and... Not only that, but uh, you'll never miss an upload. You'll follow uh, everything that we're doing, everything I got going on. You can see whatever is in my world for Drinka Nation. But until then, let's go ahead and get started. But hit that ring bell and the subscribe button so you can be a part of for Drinka Nation. So I welcome you and returning viewers, thank you. So check this out. Listen, I wanted to talk to you all today about uh, you know, hygiene. Okay, this is part three. So if you go back and look at some more videos, um, you can see I've already uploaded two videos back in the past. So this is actually personal hygiene for women part three. Okay, I wanted to talk to you women about personal hygiene because this is an epidemic. Evidently, uh, this is a, a, a epidemic and it needs to be talked about. A lot of girls don't know this. And if you do know this, you need to really literally practice good personal hygiene because it's, it's imperative. You need to take care of yourself. You're a young lady or you're a woman. You need to do that, okay? Uh, tip number one. Let's talk about this. We need to talk about it because this is something serious. So this is a story of time about personal hygiene for women. Tip number one, okay? Before and after sex, do you take a shower before or after well, my recommendation, it just really depends on your situation. Each girl's body is different. Everybody carries themselves different and have different odors to their body. It just depends on how your body is set up as a female. Now, if you are up early in the morning, you get dressed, take a shower, get dressed, and, and you know, go on about your day, maybe go to work or hang out with friends or whatnot, and then you've been gone since 10 a.m. in the morning, but then you come back home around 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening, and say, for instance, your spouse or your partner wants to get down and have sex. I personally recommend if you've been gone all day over seven hours during that day to take a shower. You've been out ripping and running, sweating, working, hanging out, chilling, whatever. Take a shower before you engage in sex. Uh, that's just my personal opinion because your body sweats. You've been run, running around and things like that. Your pores may be open. I mean, I don't know, but I personally think that you should take a shower now. Uh, take a shower before and of course you take a shower after now a lot of people don't understand uh, Because some people say well, you don't need to take a shower before if you know Some people really literally believe this but that's just my belief if you've been out and about more than seven hours You need to get yourself together. You are a female you have an open womb and also is you need to freshen yourself up not that you saying that you have something or something's wrong with you. Because some people say, well, some women go to the bathroom uh, when before they, you know, actually have sex or whatnot. They may have something. But that's not necessarily true in all cases. Some cases that is true. And I've I've heard and, I, and I've seen actually people do this. Okay. Uh, my friends will call me and talk to me. And the next thing you know, they've been out with me all day long. And next thing you know, they're like, well, I'm ready to kick it with my boo. We about to get it on. I have to call you back later, girl. And they don't even mention anything about, you know, taking a shower or they don't take a shower. And I think that that's imperative that you do that. Now, tip number two. Okay. Let's talk about this STDs because this is becoming an epidemic for women as well. STDs. A lot of you women, you're wondering what's going on if you have a, a odor or something like that, or you don't know, you having some type of discharge or things like that. That means that something is going on within your body. Our body is very sensitive down in that area. You need to really take care of it. Now, not meaning that you have an STD. It means could, you can could have a bacterial infection or a yeast infection or some type of infection, either way it goes, that means that you're not taking care of your personal area down there. That means that something's going on now. It could come from, a yeast could come from uh, soap that you use, body wash you use, your pH balance could be off, uh, the color panties that you have on. Yeast can come from a lot of things, 
Okay, but the STD comes from serious issues when you're out and you're just having sex unprotected with people and now you have a discharge, now you have an odor, now you have a breakout. That means that you are dealing with something and you need to go to see your physician immediately and get that taken care of. And even while you're on your medication, you do not need to be taking, you do not need to be having sex. When you're on medication, the doctor tells you, don't have sex because you ain't going to do nothing but pass it back and forth, especially if you're having unprotected sex. It's going to be passed back and forth. You need to not have sex at all while you're under that medication. Let your body, you know, get situated. Let the antibiotic work itself through your body to 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 help bounce it back. Now, some people don't believe that using soap or, or body wash or something, whatever is your preference, is good for your body. Me, I personally believe that I can't just use the water. Uh, I don't believe that uh, water is is. I mean, because. And this is why I believe that I, I think that water by itself is not healthy. The water that we drink, the water that comes through that faucet has a lot of stuff in it. Okay, what I mean is that they, they sterilizing it. They got, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 it runs through some type of machine and it has chemicals in it. So just using that water, a lot of people think it's safe just using water. It is safe when, in fact, it actually has a lot of stuff. Just Google it and you'll see how they process the water when you take showers or drink the water. You'll see how it's being processed. So with that being said, if you're just using water on your body, you could still have an irritation uh, or breakout or something or rash or something like that because the water by itself still ain't safe. So I personally think that using something that helps your pH balance, use something that helps your body uh, to keep it under control, uh, something very sensitive, some sensitive body wash. Everybody's body's different. So I'm just saying sensitive body wash or uh, some type of pH balance. Uh, products. Summer, they have Summer's Eve out there, uh, Vagisil uh, uh, cleanser, vagina cleanser, and things like that that you can use that's very sensitive to your body. Now, if you're sensitive or you can't use those and they that type of stuff break out, you might want to talk to your doctor and ask them or ask your doctor, what could I use in substitute of this? Because dishes are not good. Dishes will mess you up. Uh, and things like that. And I don't believe tampons is good for you. A lot of people like to use tampons. Let me hip you to tampons. Tip number three, let me hip you to tampons. Tampons, they, it has a cotton on top of it. So when you insert it in you, all of that doesn't come out. So pieces of that cotton, I believe, they still be caught up in individuals and it could cause you to set up an infection in your body or anything. And you're wondering what's going on. And if you don't have an STD, you don't have a yeast or something like that, but all of a sudden you have some type of bacterial infection from uh, this this tampon. All of this stuff don't come out when you pull that tampon out, okay? And that's just my belief. All of that stuff don't come out. I believe some of that stuff do break off. Like, it may not be a whole lot, but all of that don't come out. So, me personally, I don't like tampons. I don't like inserting anything in me and keeping it in there for 20 to 30 minutes and keep changing it. That's my preference. Tip number four. Okay, tip number four. Okay, if you know that you your your body, because you can smell yourself as a woman before anybody. Even if you're a man, you can smell yourself if you have a body odor. If your arms stink or musty, muggy, or something like that, you can smell yourself before anybody else. If you're smelling yourself, okay, get yourself together, please. Don't nobody else want to smell that mess. Don't nobody else want to get choked up, coughed up, and can't breathe because you have a body odor going on. Uh, it's best to go to the doctor immediately and get yourself together and find out what's going on. And in the meantime, in the meantime, keep sex and all that stuff on hold. Stop doing it and protect yourself at all times. Listen, if that person is not your spouse, husband or wife, you need to be strapped up by any means necessary. You need to be strapped up, okay? Because... If you're not strapping up and you know that he's a cheater or you know she's cheating and you ain't strapping up, you ain't doing nothing but passing that stuff back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you'll never get rid of it. You're going to find yourself dealing with one issue and then it's going to get worse and it's going to become a worse issue and a different uh, 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 situation that is going to be harder for you to get rid of. Get yourself together, okay? And I mean, like, nobody wants to deal with, nobody wants to deal with smelling you and you can smell yourself. I'm like, this is so out of order. This don't even make sense. 
a lot of females walking around thinking they're cute and things like that. And you stinking like, who wants to smell that? I'm just throwing y'all some nuggets and some tips on how to get yourself together, okay? We are all women and that is an open, you know, that is an open wound. You need to really take care of yourself, okay? And then when you, after you have sex, go in the shower immediately. Like, don't lay there and, and you know, um, in that stuff or, or not, you know, cleansing yourself up because that can cause issues later. It could cause some type of infection later, okay? So, uh, tip number five, and this would be my last nugget that I'm going to help y'all with about this. I'm not showing y'all anything. I'm not going to show y'all products because everybody's body is different. So, ain't no point in me showing y'all this is what I use. This is what I use. I'm, I'm just personally telling you all because everybody's body is different and set up different. What you eat also determines, uh, um, you know, what comes out, okay? Uh, like pineapples, pineapples. And, and fruit is very good for you. Um, it's very good for a woman, especially in in that area. It keeps for some reason that fruit helps it stay together. It helps it with the smell. It helps it with um, um, the from my from what I was told. Now the taste, okay, especially pineapples. Like in case you know you and your partners doing each other. Uh, as far as oral sex or whatever, I heard it, it you know, um, it's very tasteful and things like that. And just use some natural remedies on how to cleanse your body out. Uh, I don't recommend a lot of uh, store products or something like that. I personally recommend natural remedies to, to cleanse yourself as a woman, you know. Um, but, and ladies, let me tell you this. Let me throw this in there because a lot of people believe that it's okay to do this and it's not okay. Being on your menstrual is not okay and, and, and having sex on your menstrual. Stop doing it. Stop. Because you ain't doing nothing but infecting yourself. And I'm going to tell you why. That is a time and period of time where a woman's body is literally cleansing itself out. There's no reason why you need to be laying down, opening up your legs and having sex and you are your body is cleansing itself out. Like, I know your hormones is all over the place, but that's nasty. It's out of order, and you need to get yourself together. You need to stop it. Then you wonder why you caught this disease or got this disease. Well, you, you, you're you you're acting out of order. Like It's nasty that, that you're doing this. It's nasty that you're doing things like this, having sex, and you're bleeding. Stop it. Just, just stop. Give your body a rest. This should be a time where your body is cleansing itself out, and you're resting and things like that. But yeah, I hope that this uh, helps you all out. Uh, these few little nuggets and these little, you know, tips and things like that. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to show you all. I'm not going to show you all no products because your body is different from my body. And I could suggest you something, but then if you go get it, it may break you out. So you do what's best for you. At the end of the day, you need to just keep yourself cleaned. Okay? Cleanse yourself. Keep yourself clean. And... Keep yourself together. Um, if you like this video, thumbs up. Subscribe. Hit the ring bell. If you're not a subscriber, I'm going to be coming back on here uploading more videos. And we're going to have more talk time, story time, and things like that. And I'll give you all some more pointers and tips and nuggets in the future. Until then, I'll see you all some other time. Y'all have a wonderful day.